What's up guys? Y'all know what day it is. This big old Matco tool trucks here. Matco Michael's fresh back from Expo, so should have some new cool tools and deals to talk about. Let's see what he's got. You guys, come on. Fresh back from Vegas. We are back from Vegas. Made it back. <laughs> I know it ain't funny to y'all, but all the crap y'all had to go through to get to Vegas. It's funny now. It wasn't then. <laughs> um, there were several times that I was just ready to go back to the house. But, uh... So, what... To, to condense a long story down, tell everybody how long it took you to fly to Vegas from the time you left your house to the time you got there. Uh, about, well, from the house to the Vegas, it was about 30 hours. But so y'all could have drove and yeah. got there quicker. <laughs> yeah. Um, airport to airport, it was 28 hours. Um, a missing flight attendant, a fired flight attendant, uh, a missing plane. And I guess um, five states, three time zones later, we got to Vegas <laughs> two days late. I think it's funny that they lost a plane. Yeah. That's what's so funny about it. Yeah, a lot of people on the route don't understand how that happened, so it goes into a long conversation of how it happened. But, yeah, lost plane. Um, that's probably That probably wouldn't have been what I told everybody. You know, it's in maintenance. Yeah, uh, I'd have been like, hey, man, the pilot was drunk, and we don't know where he parked it, but we got somebody going out there looking uh, for him. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, it would have been in maintenance, or well, we had a winter storm. I'd have blamed it on it. You know, we're mm -hmm. de-icing it. We're getting yeah. the runway. I don't know what I would have said, but it wouldn't have been we don't know where the plane's at. That's not what we would have said. <laughs> uh, but, hey, whatever. You know, now, I wouldn't have told people that we didn't know where the flight attendants were either, but they did. So That was a... I felt really bad for y'all. I'm not gonna lie, I seen some of the stories and the stuff on Instagram. I was like, oh man, I bet Michael, Michael is livid right now. Well, you know, I I handled it pretty good until, until the lost plane and then I just had enough. It was, and I, I didn't even get time to lose my crap. I went up there and uh, a TSA agent come up uh, highly mad and so I let him take it out on them and I just stood back and watched, you know. And you even was willing to be the flight attendant. I was going to be the flight attendant. I tried to be a flight attendant. You know, I'll push the cart. I, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> taking away. And that's what I told them up there. I said, I'm not trying to take away from any flight attendant. Like I may screw this up, but just put me doing the simple stuff. I'll push the cart. I'll do something like all the safety stuff like, that y'all have to do. I can teach y'all how to buckle that seatbelt. That's not a problem. Yeah, I mean all the safety stuff. You, hey, y'all do that. But we had four flight attendants on that flight. I think we could have made it with three and some redneck guy from the south. I, I think. I we guarantee you, if if it comes down to it, I can do without that drink on that three-hour flight to Vegas. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty I'd, sure I, I'll be. I I can survive that long without a six-ounce cup of liquid. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm sure there's some kind of regulation that they have to go by. They got to have a certain number. I understand that. I'll joke aside, but it seems like we could have called somebody in or something <laughs> quicker. Then. They could have had, you know, like in school when you had the teach, you got to be the teacher's helper if you was really good that day. That's right. They could have picked, you know, somebody could have been, you know, got a little gold star and they could have helped the flight attendant. Yeah, I mean, I let was, me show you how to dangle this little rubber tube to hold this plastic cup we call a mask, and if it comes down, you got enough sense to put it on. You'll be alright. Well, the fact that they have to say remove your mask first before you put that on scares me about the people that we're walking around daily mm -hmm. with. Like if that is the degree of worry that we we were afraid that they don't know to take their mask off, that worries me. Yeah. Um, I I give everybody walking around a little bit more common sense than that. I may not should, <laughs> I <do> too. <laughs> but I also don't see losing a plane. Like that's yeah. that's 
Well, that's what I told her. I lose there. my keys sometimes, but they're little. They're you little. Know, it ain't taking up three acres. Right. Of they're little. Space, you, know? <laughs> you know, when they were looking for it, I told her, I said, do they not have. I, I, all the movies, they turn on this little screen and it's flashing the screen light mm -hmm. and it's showing the plane. Where's it at? Where, well, let's yeah. look at it. You know. The radar shows exactly what Something that. like. They sell these little items that go on your keys yeah, that like, you can find them. They, that's what they need to do. I don't know. What airline was it? Uh, American Airlines. What y'all um, should do is donate the first Apple AirTag to them, um, and they'll see how useful it'll be when they lose Well, the I got to go back. American Airlines lost the flight attendant, and Frontier didn't know where the plane was. Okay. So there was two different. The whole airline system right now, I know they're stressed. Uh, and I don't blame the flight attendant that didn't want to come jump on our plane because she was headed home. Uh, I, when you take your workforce and you force something on them and you and you mm -hmm. shrink your workforce, that's on you. Like yep. all the money they're losing is on them. You know, don't. I, oh, they're not losing money. They're well, just raising the rates. Cause well, before you're right. that happened, I was paying about two hundred and sixty to three hundred dollars to fly pretty much anywhere I needed to go. Yeah. Now it's. Four seventy-five to six hundred dollars. So they're not losing money; they're just saving it by not having to pay as many people. Yeah, there was a there were some new distributors. I think they said they've been in about three months, maybe a little less. So this was their first expo, and they were dealing with the same crap we was. They were sitting in the floor right beside us, waiting on the um, <laughs> waiting on the plane to to show up. And when the lights started going off, the restaurants were closed. Uh, I looked at them and I said, "Well." welcome to the madness i mean <laughs> i don't know what to tell you i felt sorry for them because you know it's it was it was bad i'm not laughing at you i'm laughing with you oh i'm you. telling you we're laughing now but it wasn't it wasn't good then but i mean I think, and what's crazy is i was coming home when y'all was going out there yeah so I had a, I had some issues myself coming back from Vegas, and then I look on the internet, and y'all are struggling going out there. I'm like, huh? Maybe it's time to move away from Vegas. Like, let's try somewhere. Well, there. you know what? What made me mad the, the worst, and it played through my head the whole 28 hours of sitting in this airport, was I called two days before this big winter storm hit. Like, there's going to be some comments, you know, hey, it's a winter storm, they're overworked. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I called two days before the winter storm and said, hey, there's a winter storm fixing to hit the area that I'm flying out of. It is, it is actually shorter for me to go to another airport that's away from all the winter mess. Can I go to that airport? Not until it cancels. Not until the flight cancels. We won't honor it. Yeah, I would have been better off to flee from Tupelo to Nashville for $79. And I'm gonna tell you why you'll save money doing that. The time you pay parking yeah. for the week in Memphis, plus the drive up there, 79 bucks, 30 minutes from the time your ass hits the seat till they open the door in Nashville so, for $79. And then you take a direct flight from there all the way to Vegas. So, here, so here's the deal. Two days prior, I said fly me out of Tupelo fly me out of Birmingham, fly me out of Huntsville, fly me out of Nashville, fly me out of Jackson, I don't care. Fly me out of one of those instead of going to Memphis. They offered, um, where did they, Nashville. I said that, you're not understanding. Winter, winter storm, it's gonna hit Memphis, it has to go Memphis and Nashville, you know, same state. You know, Nashville's actually more into it. I don't want, well, what about Kentucky? Again, winter storm, you know, that's down the, here. That's the person that did not take geography in high school. Yeah, you know, down down this way. Uh, when I said I didn't care to drive to an airport, I didn't mean drive through the storm to get there. Like, I don't want to drive to Chicago to fly out. So they end up telling me these flights that's available, and there's some out of Birmingham, there's some out of Jackson, there's some out of Na uh, um, where's all, Atlanta. There's just, just all these flights available. And I'm like, great, book me one of them out of Birmingham. Well, we can't right now. The flights have to cancel. It's like, well, book me out of Huntsville. Well, the flights got to cancel. Why do I have to wait until the crap gets deep to decide to that I don't want to walk yeah. through it? You know, mm -hmm. and that's what made me mad the whole time. It's like if you just and so they call me the day before and it's like, hey, so today was a let's just say it was a Tuesday that I was trying to change it. Wednesday comes along, they're calling me going, hey, you might want to change. There's a winter storm coming. Like. 
I stayed on the phone with you for an hour and a half, two hours yesterday, telling you I wanted to change, and now you're telling me I need to change. Let's change it. Uh, well, the only bad thing is there's no <laughs> flights available. Oh, they're already full. Well, that's nice. How did they all change their flight Yeah. when, well, when the flight started canceling, it automatically started pre-booking them for the flights. Maybe that's why I said I wanted to book yesterday. So, yeah, that played through my head a couple That's times. A, that goes back to that common sense thing. Yeah, we supposed to have been there Friday at 1 o'clock. We got there Sunday morning at 2 a.m. Uh, I wasn't very happy. No play, all work at that point. Yeah, yeah I, I was. have no good time. Well, no we, free get, time. we get there. She sees the lights, and she's all ready, ready to go eat. I'm like, no, I'm going to bed. I, I'm, well, you're not hungry? I'm starving, but I, well, I've got class in five hours. I'm, less than five hours. Yeah, it was... <laughs> four hours or something i don't know i was i screwed which it. i stayed the venetian no we stayed in caesars oh, um yeah. Yeah, that's good. but i mean the hotel was pretty nice I, I liked the hotel and stuff but the whole first day honestly i was just walking around trying to wake up and and realize what was going on but well did uh, y'all eat at ruth chris we actually didn't get to eat at a lot of places because um it's because we missed two missed days we had to play catch up the whole time, you know, the the time that we were going to use to actually make a little bit of a vacation out of it, it got it taken immediately. And we could have, we could have scheduled it after we could have stayed longer. But the problem with that is we had already dropped the kids off once and then had to go pick them back up. And then we had to drop them off again. And so we had done put the kids through those. I mean, they were without us for those two days that mm -hmm. we were, you know, basically in limbo. So um, we didn't want to put them, we've got, two younger kids to just stretch it yeah, out any further yeah, that's true um plus you can't take a mom away from her kids that long so you know mm -hmm. it was at that point like you said it was all work no play so that's uh, well tell us what all news coming with matco well the they did release the four series box they did do um some changes on it you can get aluminum handles now they actually i know one of your uh big things was the spot on the front to charge your phones mm -hmm. you said you was afraid when you opened it that closing the drawer is going to get hung in there yeah so they've actually made it to where it's still got some on the front but it's actually got them on the inside too so you can hook your usb up on the inside of there okay. uh, and leave your phone in the drawer that way it's not getting pulled out or anything like that uh, they changed the way the cord is on the back uh, on the forest is for a while uh, on the back it's just been one cord to come out and the cord is what it is now they've got a detachable cord uh, so that makes it better as That's well way better. and they have uh, like a power strip on the back now too so you can actually plug like if you put a hutch and stuff you can mm -hmm. actually run your cord down to it and plug into it so there's there's more That's available good. there um, and the kick plates the kick plates have normally been held on um, by 3m tape um, that works really well until it gets super 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 hot and then unless you've got you know, unless you took all the pre-care that you could and, you know, used all the promote the, what is it, 3M adhesion promoters and all mm -hmm. that, it would fall off uh, eventually. So they actually made it to where they screw on from the inside now. So nice. they, they have done some upgrades to it. They've raised the power strip on the inside. They've raised it up. That way there's more room. That way you can push your chargers back. They did add... Um, a tool uh, electric tool holder in there as well mm -hmm. um, they did come out with a cart that has a sliding drawer for your tools uh, your electric tools and stuff so that was cool to see um, of course there's a bunch of blue stuff coming out um, now it so is, we got over the blue heel to hunt we, we, we've got blue there is a time delay on some of it it's um, it's like a time release um, somebody commented on one of the pictures that it, it's just bla uh, blue um, Mayhew pry bars. You're absolutely right. Mayhew makes our pry bars. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, that was the Mayhew people sitting there showing us them, but they, they are on time delay. So from what he described to us, he was going to catch the um, back order up on the other colors, and just as soon as they caught that up, they would they would Roll add the blue. So that's good. Um, <clears throat> well, I don't know why everybody fusses about that. Like every tool truck in America sells Nipex. If they're not, they're they're stupid. You know. Well, it's no different than you know. We've said this for a long time, and there's still somebody on the air of every video that's like, "Oh, you know, this is rebranded." I really wish you would take the time to do your research because almost everybody is. 
um, but here's the thing about it. Uh, everybody adds their own little bit of warranty to it. Right. Um, we've got some special um, special edition creepers coming in. Mm -hmm. um, the designs on them are really nice. The only time we were going to be able to order them was at Expo, so we did order some. They only said they were going to warranty them for 90 days, but Maco made it a year warranty. So, you know, that's that extra warranty that you don't get. So. Uh, but now some of the stuff is lifetime warranty through the through them, and, and right. we just honor the lifetime warranty. I'm not well, saying Well, I that. mean, it ain't no secret. The reason why you buy tools from a tool truck is two reasons. One, the service you get, because it's nice knowing that guy's going to show up and he's going to fix your tool. Right. Like, prime example, you remember those airline pliers I bought yep. through you? Like, what would have happened if I'd have ordered them off the internet when they broke? Yeah, it'd that, probably been a damn nightmare to get that one set replaced, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's just look at that one too. Let's don't talk about all the other crap we break that you always fix that most of the time's not even seen on video or heard about. Okay. It may be rebranded, but how much trouble is that? It's the convenience factor and also knowing that the tools is as good as the guy you sell them to. Yeah. I've said that a hundred times. So nobody that gets on my truck would ever hear me. If, if they got on there and they said, who made this? They would never get lied to. I would tell mm -hmm. them, right, I'm not going to lie to you. As a distributor, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but also what I try to tell people on buying that, that is a very important part about the service and, and, and everything like that. Um, but I also try to tell people, when you put too much market in one place, so the internet, let's say we're ordering from the internet, you're taking away from small, mm -hmm. um, I consider us a mom and pop business just because um, we're, we're a small business. We're not a chain that, you know, right. we're not employees of Maco. We, we own this business, it lives and dies. Uh, if it goes bankrupt, we're bankrupt. That's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And so what I tell people is when you start trying to save two or three dollars or even 10, 20, 30 dollars, uh, you think that's a big amount. It is, I agree. But what happens is when that business goes out and it's no longer local and you're ordering from the internet, when that happens enough, all of a sudden the internet's prices are gonna go up because they've cornered the market, right? So then you've gotta wait on all these mom and pop star stores to come back. Um, our, well, look what they've done to the grocery stores. That's what it's Look what they've done to the gas stations. Well, that's what I'm saying. When anything's controlled by uh, one big corporation, um, I don't want to get sued by anybody, but we all know when I say the internet who I'm mainly talking about. Jeff Bezos. Um, when, when you make one... I'll say it. He sued me. Was he going to get a camera and a lens and a wore out bunch of junk? Okay. When, 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 you, <laughs> when you put too much power there, you, I understand they em, employ jobs. Um, they do a bunch of good, and I agree. But you also have that factor of once, that, once that's the only option, that's the only option. It don't matter if you're paying ten dollars for that screwdriver. If you're paying a hundred, the only way you're going to get that screwdriver is a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you've pushed out the smaller business and you've left that. I'll give Walmart. Uh, well, a Walmart hand. started out good when Sam Walton on it. Because you remember, well, you might, you guys may not, because y'all were so much younger. But do y'all remember the old Walmart store that's on the east side of Boonville? I don't remember the east side of Boonville. It used to have a huge sign it said something about USA made. Like they took pride in selling stuff that was made in America. Yeah, well. And then I, as Sam got older. Right. You know, the kids start running it and I guess investors or whatever's making decisions, all that went to the wayside. Now it's all about gross profit. Right. Know? And he put a lot, a lot of small local businesses here out when they built the the next Walmart, which is where Tractor Supply yeah, is. Yeah, we're on our third Walmart here. Yeah, we're on our third Walmart. But, we did three upgrades. But so every time he upgraded, when they put the other one in, you know, Food Giant went out. Y'all remember Food Giant? Food Giant, yeah. Well, here, that's what I was going to say. <clears throat> and we, we've been guilty of it, too, um, for a little bit. Uh, we're changing that. And, and what I'm going to say on that is walmart they've got everything in one right it's, it's mm -hmm. nice it is but here's the thing we got another locally gone uh or locally owned um grocery store across town i actually worked at it they provided me my first job me too um and the thing about it is i put in at walmart too and guess who didn't hire a kid that was still in high school mm -hmm. that needed a job um they didn't care 
Yeah. Well, that's why we still shop at Walden's today. They may be a little more expensive. Well, that's the and But you know what I like about it? When you walk in, the guy that owns it, well, the son that owns son, it now. Yeah. He speaks to you. It don't matter if you got a hundred thousand in the bank or you got five dollars in the bank. So everybody's the same name. So Walden's actually employed my dad, um, my sister, a bunch of my cousins, um, me, and then they've they've employed people underneath. You know, my my younger cousins now. Mm -hmm. um, but not only that, but that's what I what I've told her. Yeah, you can go to Walmart and get everything in one place. But I'm not letting that store go out because of me because mm -hmm. they've employed people themselves and not only that they're local and then once we do that we've gave walmart all the power in Bloomville because where else are you gonna buy gro groceries if walden's goes out in Bloomville? nobody on the video knows but nowhere their I mean, produce is better their meats are better yeah well there's there's I, I i said that wrong there's walden's and piggly wiggly but both of those if you let mm -hmm. them go out yeah. you've, you've put all your all your eggs in the basket is to either go somewhere else to try to find a local store or, or buy from there, and I just don't want that to happen. We do buy a little bit from Walmart, but if I can buy it at Walden's, I'm gonna buy it there just because it's local. Well, there's Walmart. been a lot of old school gas stations. Like, when I grew up, they had Dixie Gas here. I don't even know if it was still open when y'all was. It, it was, know. and you know, I, I kinda wanna buy that building because it's got a little shop beside it. You don't mm -hmm. see a gas station with a shop no more, and that is just terrible because how many times have you went to get gas and your tire's low and you go over to the automated air machine now and, and it ain't working? Well, guess what? When there was a mechanic on hand there, they could put air in it. Well, what I liked about that was, you know, that was one of the last hometown gas stations yep. here. You didn't have to prepay. Cause you know, right. back in the day, people didn't use debit cards, right? Well, they had, I'm sure there was some, but it wasn't like it is now, like nobody carries cash. You know how aggravating it is to pull up there when you don't know how much it's gonna to take to fill your truck up, but you wanna fill your truck up? Yep. What I always talked about, if they knew you, cause we bought gas there all the time, so they knew my whole family. When the time you got the pump off, you stuck it in a nozzle, it's ready to pump gas. You didn't have to go in and prepay gas. Right, well you're bringing up another issue and that's trust, right? Mm -hmm. So when it's locally owned, I can go into Walden's and I can say, Brad, man, I just got this home and I opened it up and it's labeled green beans and it's corn. And he's gonna be like, okay, well here, let's get you another one. If I take that back to Walmart, if I take that can in there, they're gonna be like, yeah, right. You know, they're either gonna, they're either gonna believe me or they ain't, but who's gonna believe me first? A big you know what I've done at Walden's? Of course, you know, I live, I don't live close, you know, it's yeah. 17 minutes for me to drive to the grocery store from my house. I've went in there before on a Saturday, forgot my wallet at home. Yep. They done rung me up. I stick my hand in my pocket. I'm like, oh, crap. He's like, come back pay for more. Yeah. So that's something else. Everybody in the world right now is talking about how they're not trusted and how everything is inconvenient because you got to do this and you got to do that. And you got to pay money down to order stuff. Mm -hmm. Guess what? That's because they don't know you. That's and that's another thing about your tool trucks. And, and I will say, I've met a lot of new distributors. Um, not that they're new to the game, just new people come up to me and talk to me at Expo. Um, y'all have some really good distributors out there. I'm not saying every one of y'all do, but again, that everybody owns their own business, but there's a lot of great distributors that were Expo. Um, they know you, they trust you. Mm -hmm. Try sending that tool back and swearing up and down you didn't put a breaker bar on it or something else when they don't know you. It's, it, you know, um, there is a electric company that you send something in and, and, and it, it's abuse and it's like, well, I trust this customer and they go off of, well, 99% of the time that it looks like this, it's abuse. So that's what we go with. And it's like, that's not, it's yeah. when you, when you have the power to do warranty, you get that warranty because of trust, right? Well, one thing else that I want to say is, you remember that wine back kit I bought from you? The Matco brake wine back kit? Yeah. I didn't like it. Right. I called Michael and I'm like, I don't like this thing. I was working on a Ford Transit ambulance in there. And I said, like, it don't work right. And he's like, yeah, let me run by. He drove all the way across town, used at another shop. You come here, got out, went in there and go, you're right, this thing sucks. Give me full credit back. Didn't argue, didn't be like, well, man, I mean, it sucks. You bought that and it sucks, but. Right. Like, that's a rare thing too. That's why I like buying off a tool truck. Yep. And if people don't wise up, in 10 years, they ain't gonna be no tool trucks. Well, it's amazing to me how many people get on the videos, and I, we, I, neither one of us meant to turn this into this kind of section, but 
um, and say to buy here, buy there, buy it on here, buy it on, what you're, what you're doing is you're hurting that company. And I'll tell you why. I'm not going to tell you the vendor that told me this at Expo, but we asked him, we said, why do you sell at basically every available spot to sell in? And he said this, he said, look, he said, if I only sold to one group, they would have to order a hundred times more because I depend on orders from all of them. Mm -hmm. You cancel one of those, somebody has to step up somebody and order pick more. Up the slack, right? So if not, we go out of business. Well, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So to try to cut tool trucks away and cut, uh, how many people are gonna have the money to go and order this stuff off line, right off the bat, or maybe not even offline, go somewhere, I, I, online is the only thing I can think of, but to order it all at once, pay for it, and then have to deal with paying for shipping there. Oh, well, they'll refund your shipping if it's if it's covered. Yeah, are they gonna say it's covered? Yep. So, you know, don't necessarily get rid of anything. I get it. Um, buy on deal. That's mm -hmm. when you buy, buy on deal. And if you absolutely need it today and it's not on deal, I guarantee you, your tool guy's gonna make it the best he can because he trusts you, he knows mm -hmm. you. Um, and in some instances, like with you, when I programmed the Jeep key, my snap-on scanner wouldn't do it. My all-tail scanner wouldn't do it. I call Michael, hey man, will that can program my Jeep key? Well, it's supposed to. I don't know if it will or not. It's supposed to. He brings it by here, lets me program my Jeep key, and don't even charge me for it. Like, what's the chances of Jeff Bezos going, hey man, order that scan tool, program the Jeep key, send it back, it's all good. Yeah, there, there's definitely advantages of buying local. Just guys pay your tool guys right now is the worst time not to pay your tool guy because with everything going up i mean we've even had to put a sign up on our truck telling people look we cannot let you owe a thousand dollars and pay 20 bucks a week i know you need the tools you know you need the tools take and invest in yourself mm -hmm. and and get some tools that get the job done and by no means do i ever get on here and say oh well that's a Mayhew pry bar. Like if somebody brought a Mayhew branded pry bar on here and said, you know, this is the pry bar I have, I want a better one. I'm not gonna say, well, yeah, that's junk. Here, let me sell you this one. Mm -hmm. I know who made my pry bar. I'm gonna say, look, man, that's that's a really great quality pry bar. What trouble are you having with it? Oh, well, I just heard that it was cheaper. So, you know, I, we heard stories from text from, we bought this impact and well, we're gonna go with Maco or Snap-on because it, it, it's better and it's like okay I get that but are you sure that the price is the only reason it makes it better because mm -hmm. it costs more just because it costs more don't make it better I understand that but when you go to um, Harbor Freight or something like that and you're buying Phillips head screwdrivers or Walmart and you're buying Phillips head screwdrivers flathead screwdrivers just know that if, if, if it starts stripping that screw out you're fixing to be looking for an extractor kit so buy them same time because mm -hmm. We've all had that screwdriver that is no longer a Phillips. It's like this weird shape, <laughs> like point that the- It's a rounded point Phillips. Yeah, that, that <laughs> it don't even look, it looks like a star now and we don't even know how it got there. Or the flathead screwdriver that every time you go to twist it, it's somehow deciding to raise its way out because the angle's not right. Mm -hmm. Um, it's crazy to think about how much engineering goes in a screwdriver. It is. But you, yeah. you get just a regular, um, cheap flathead screwdriver and go try to turn uh, a flathead screw and see if it well, don't start handle to turn makes a out. big difference too how much you can put out on one right well and people's we argued about with me about that i said so you're telling me the old school red and clear craftsman handle you can twist as hard as you can a matco handle yeah like no you can't because that damn thing hurts your hand like you <laughs> just physically can't put that much Something else on. too um when a company has two different style handles, we had this one here and everybody liked this, which this one broke. So it's it's definitely no good anymore. But this is an old style that we used to have and, and I think we still have a little bit in inventory somewhere, but they're, they're pretty much not used anymore. We mm -hmm. went to the new style with a grip. We've talked about this in several videos. Um, if you'll notice, they changed from here to here. It wouldn't that, well, we just want to change it up. No, we improved it. And the reason that we improved it is because it adds value. Mm -hmm. So the Craftsman screwdrivers that you're talking about, the number one thing with them is the handles break. Mm -hmm. And why do they break? Well, it's the way they're made, right? Now, I have Craftsman screwdrivers at home. In fact, I think I used one this weekend because 
my son has lost every one of mine, so I'm having to look under couches hey, and stuff. Hey, if you talk to that lady back there, she'll see you. See I got to find them. But <laughs> either way, I mean, if you'll notice, they've also made it to where you can put objects in here and make it to where it turns it easier. Right. And we've all hit the top of a screwdriver. If you hit the top of a Craftsman too much, it's going to crack for mm -hmm. sure. Which I'm not telling you to go beat on your micro screwdrivers, but we've all done it when it wouldn't come loose and we hit it because we didn't have an impact driver because we didn't talk to our tool dealer. These, these come in handy. That's right. But before we go off on any brother rabbit holes, we do have some tools that we like to talk about. The hyper step drill bits are on sale in my area this week. There's different regions. Um, if your flyer Is come it just out- Is the 21 piece that's on top? Yeah, that's the 21 piece. We have, we had the 29 piece at Expo, so they put the 21 piece to give us options. If your flyer looks like this, uh, you're in the same region as us, so you're gonna have the same stuff not all regions are the same but if so that's some of the stuff that's going to be there everybody likes knives um yep. and they've got this style knife here now i think they said it was a new design i may be lying i haven't seen it before i am lying that doesn't say new beside it but i thought it did it may be new to the truck it's new to the truck new to me uh i haven't seen it before plus they have the bottles pink and uh pink and black uh guys if you forgot so to get that's stuff, got a speaker that's right a water bottle that's right uh, if you forgot to get your wife something for Valentine's Day and you've been chewed out and you're still in the doghouse, <laughs> no better way than to go ahead and buy one of those a Matco for water bottle with a speaker. That's right, because then, you, then you're getting permission to buy on the truck. Plus, they got the 32-bit sets on sale. Um, yeah, those are good little kits. Right those there. are nice little kits. They've got <laughs> some offset filter wrenches. Um, see a lot of creative ways people are trying to take off those uh, upper... That's got the oil caps on top of the engine mm -hmm. with the plastic ways. I, I've seen... Everything from adjustable wrenches to pipe wrenches to everything else, but uh, and then they got locking extensions in sell too. So sweet, uh, nice little flyer. That's just some of the stuff that I ordered out of it to try to get some of my guys uh, some stuff to look at because my order hasn't made it here yet. It's supposed to be here by next week. Um, that's why we didn't. I know everybody's like, well, it turned into a talk session. Um, those are new. Those bit sets there, they are new. So. Um, as soon as my order, I should have a bunch of new stuff, but. Yeah, those are pretty cool little sets right there. Very nice. But the the, the uh, speaker bottles are like 59 bucks. So that's about, if you're trying to find anything less than that for your wife or Valentine's, she's gonna be mad. So don't mm. try to, don't try to cheap out. Try. <laughs> Try to get her some flowers. And At least you, you make payments on it on the tool truck. That's right. You can't afford that, right? Uh, buy her a jacket, some shirts, something like that. But either way, we I'm sure there's a lot of people in the doghouse. <laughs> Guarantee you, buddy. <laughs> you know, the bad part about it is, is I actually got hers, and I gave it to her on the weekend because the kids are there, and I always buy her something from, for the kids and, and for me. And so I gave her hers. And then, for whatever reason, I didn't realize that Monday was Valentine's Day. I thought it was Wednesday. So we go all day Monday, and I didn't say it not one time until a customer, the very last shop, said something about Valentine's Day, and I, it hit me. It was like, oh, crap. You screwed up. Which I had done gave her everything, but I, yeah, I didn't say it all day long. So The um, words are more important, Michael. Do you not understand that? Well, <laughs> um... I, that it was a wild week. Let though. me tell you a secret. If you got a phone, the way they update now, if you'll go in there <laughs> on like the 13th of February and put tomorrow's Valentine's Day and set a reminder forever, yeah, you'll always get a notification. You'll never ever forget again. I gotta remember that it's the 14th first. See, that's the thing. Well, right now would be a good time to enter. You're right. Your phone when I leave here, you I don't need ever to put that in. Again. But yeah, it's fun. All right, guys. Well, I'm thinking to cut this off and get back in there and get something done. Like always, thanks for hanging out with us today. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up. Check over here for merchandise, co-tools, and discount codes down there. If you're not subscribed, click that button. Y'all have a great week. See ya.